Okay, if you remember the video on the uh, TR4C that had plate current but no output. Lots and lots of plate current but no output. Here's uh, what we found, the resolution. And um, before I power it up here, I'll make another short video of it tonight on 75 meters during a QSO that we regularly have. But let me show you what, uh, what all the detail was on getting this thing back on the air. So, stand by. Okay, here's, uh, here's some of the parts involved in the repair. We got a uh, 2700 picofarad coupling capacitor. Um, section G of the band switch, which is in the final tank circuit, which is in the uh, right tap on the final inductor and also decides how much of the loading variable cap to switch in. We have a uh, temperature compensating cap here. It's part of the uh, feedback neutralization circuit. Of course, this wasn't really necessary, but we replaced it anyway. The uh, big electrolytic. And it's got a date code of 7509. So the ninth week of 1975 is when the capacitor was made. And finally the little bushing here um, for the dial zero set. Oh, and I forgot to mention um, 12BA6 RF amplifier brought the sensitivity way up. And I also replaced a 6EA8 um, for a little extra juice on the upper bands. That's the uh, heterodyne oscillator. Anyway, here's the new Hayseed Hamfest uh, capacitor that replaced that multi-section. Everything else on the top here remains about the same. Uh, you probably can't see, but back here in the RF cage, that little yellow blob back there, that's the new coupling cap. So, uh, cleaned it up quite a bit, and I think it's going to be okay. Let me show you the underneath. Okay, we're focused in on the um, RF power amplifier section underneath the chassis here. Let me try to show you a little bit about what happened back here. The most obvious thing is the uh, band switch here. This wafer of the band switch. Which initially I had put in backwards. I mean, not the wiring of the switch, but the insert that rotates. Has a little key in it, and I'll show you that in a minute. And um, I wasn't paying close attention when I took it apart, but apparently the key is 180 degrees different from the key in all the other band switch sections. <laughs> so it took a minute or two to figure that out. But anyway, there's the new band switch. Try to get a close up in a minute. And the, uh, the little ceramic uh, temperature compensating cap is right here. And I'll try to zoom in on that. Those uh, really are no longer available, so we had to make uh, had to make something here. Let me see if I can get a good picture of it. No, it's hard to do. Anyway. Right, let me get this, right here, it's out of focus, I know, but there's a little NPO chip cap on a homemade printed circuit board that takes the place of that uh, tubular temperature compensating cap, maybe you can see it a little better now, anyway. Um, it seems to work okay. Okay, we've uh, widened out the view here a little bit now. And um, whatever event took place that caused the band switch to blow up and uh, all that ceramic stuff to go bad, rather violently, I would imagine, um, also had an effect here on the TR relay board. There's uh, uh, three 1N4148 diodes used in the relative power and metering circuit that were all shorted. 
and uh, there was actually a little bit of damage to the back of that board once I got it out of there. So kind of fixed that up, put the uh, fuse lamp receiver protector back in, straightened up some of the wiring back here by uh, the power connector. And other than that, just kind of cleaned up the controls and the band switch. Unfortunately, this one does have a bad volume control. Volume RF gain and on off switch. Um, it is not bad when you're just listening to it, but if you're actually working the control right where the normal volume level would be, there's pretty bad scratchiness, bad spot. And it is the control, so that'll uh, something to keep an eye out for. Okay, you want to look for some bad parts here. Here's the uh, temperature compensating cap. That's the uh, high voltage uh, coupling cap, blocking cap, that lets actual RF pass through to the Pi network. And here's the band switch. Let me see if I can get this into view. I'll show you what I was talking about regarding the uh, little key. Here it's on this side of the flat, there's a little notch right there. And initially I thought that would line up with every other notch on that flat side of the band switch, but uh, uh, this one did not. Anyway, um, let me show you the bad spot on the switch. Hang on. Okay, here's the uh, the band switch, and you can see, I hope, right here, this tab is blown away and missing, and that is the uh, 10 meter, or when it's in the 10 meter position, and there's a lot of chart around the rotor piece here. There, you can see that notch on the flat a little bit better, maybe. That's the one I originally had put in. So I didn't have to remove the switch or anything. I just had to pull the shaft out and rotate the centerpiece 180 degrees and put the shaft back in. Okay, so here it is um, in the service position. We'll put it on the air tonight after dark and make a short uh, video of a QSO. Uh, let's see, I just got done with uh, going through the alignment and neutralization, and here's what I'm getting. On 80 meters, with the plate at 2, the load at 3, RF at 4, drive at 10 o'clock, 175 plus watts, as measured on my trusty Heathkit <laughs> HM102. So keep that in mind. It's probably not DBA which means dead ball is accurate, but uh, close enough. 40 meters, plate at 5, load at 3, RF at 6, drive at 10 o'clock, 175 plus watts. 20 meters, plate at 7, load at 2, RF at 4, drive at 2 o'clock, 150 plus watts. 15 meters, Plate at 8, load at 3, RF at 5, drive at 2 o'clock, power 115 watts. So 15 and 10 are down a little bit, but I think we may have to live with that compromise um, to protect the neutralization. You know, um, I can get more power out at the expense of the plate current dip not being exactly at the right spot. So this is the best we can do. And on 10 meters, plate at 9, load at 2, RF at 3, drive at 2 o'clock, 115 watts out. So that's it. We'll uh, have a short little QSO video coming up later on tonight. But um, we're wrapping this one up. So Mark? It'll be heading back your way pretty soon, I hope. So, keep tinkering. That's it for now.